We make a great stake to start today with Vicky Perrawell from Nesta. Now, Vicky is an expert in innovation program design and challenge prizes. She's got nearly 10 years of experience of supporting innovation in the UK, spanning a range of topics, including education and the environment. Since joining Nesta, she's been responsible for designing and delivering several major programs to encourage, support and reward innovation. These have included the highly successful Big Green Challenge for which she led the design and delivery. The Big Green Challenge was one of the first challenge prizes focusing on social innovation. Prior to her time at Nesta, Vicky spent four years in the performing arts sector as a fundraiser, writer, manager and performer as well. This time, this morning, Vicky will get us off to a great start by telling us about the Nesta Centre for Challenge Prizes. So, I introduce you, Vicky Purawal. Thank you very much, Nigel. Wow, that was a scary introduction to try and live up to. Um, so, yeah, I'm Vicky Purawal. I'm currently head of uh, Challenge Prize Design at Nesta's Centre for Challenge Prizes, which is quite a new thing, and I'll tell you a bit more about that later on in the presentation. But um, to start with, I just want to tell you a little bit about challenge prizes and, and how we define them. So this is our kind of working definition of challenge prize. So a challenge prize offers a reward to whoever, that's in big letters for a good reason, can first or most effectively meet a defined challenge. And the reason this is um, part of a, 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 a set of open innovation tools is that it prescribes the goal it says what we're looking for people to achieve, but it doesn't prescribe the who and the how. So it doesn't assume to know who is going to come up with the best ideas or what those best, and when I say best, I mean kind of tangibly most effective ideas are going to be. So that's kind of why it sits within open innovation. And the other thing, um, the thing that differentiates it from other prizes, which are often called recognition prizes, is that it responds to the challenge rather than being awarded for past achievements. So it kind of puts aside what you've done in the past and how successful you might be and what, how, how um, efficient you might be about running an organisation and just looks at your response to the challenge. They also get called inducement prizes, but I don't particularly like them. <laughs> Sounds a bit painful. So um, challenge prizes aren't a new thing. They're at least around a 300, year, uh, 300 years old. Uh, they've been used to um, advance things like marine navigation. They were responsible for the invent of the canning process. So I don't know whether we'd have baked beans today without a challenge prize. Um, they were um, the invention of cellulose, uh, the advances in air travel, um, uh, train travel, space travel. And there's been a big... this. Um, uh, chart here to illustrates there's been a big growth in the use of challenge prizes in recent decades. So you've got um, sort of the early 2000s here. And so since then, there's been a massive growth in the use of them. Um, they are similar um, in some ways. They share some characteristics to other developments in innovation. So in particular, challenge-led innovation. You'll hear about this, I think, from some of the other speakers today as well. It's a lot of open innovation techniques use um, challenge-led approaches. So they're looking for ideas in response to something quite specific, usually a, a social, environmental, or perhaps economic kind of challenge. Um, and things like outcome-based commissioning would fall into, into that category as well. They also share characteristics with a, a, quite a few developments around results-based finance at the moment. So things like, things like impact investment or outcome-based commissioning would fall under that. And so challenge prizes sit in this kind of space in the middle. But there's also the prize element of itself. There's something quite specific about prizes in the language, in the, the way that they're presented and the language that's used, the excitement that's built around them. They have a kind of different sense. It's, you have a kind of different sense of kudos ringing, winning a prize than, than winning a grant, for example. And also, if prizes are financial, they don't have to be financial, but if they are, um, they tend not to have strings attached. So in that sense, they're quite different from getting a grant. You don't have a set of milestones where you, that you have to meet. They, they normally kind of don't have many strings attached. And so the, the, the space that I'm most interested in in relation to this and that we're particularly interested in at the Centre of Challenge Prizes is this space right in the middle. But we're also really interested in and engaging with some of the stuff that's happening around here. Um, other stuff that I 
couldn't build into this, which would make it far too complicated, is that uh, developments around um, innovation in the way that we procure services and also innovation in crowd, um, the whole kind of crowdsourcing and crowdfunding is, are also really interesting areas that there's a lot of potential for developments um, in use of challenge prizes to, to kind of um, merge with and, and, and discover new, um, create new models in, by combining with. Some of the benefits of challenge prizes, and don't worry, I'm not going to talk you through all of these. We don't have time. But just to highlight a couple, um, one in particular is around, I've mentioned already, is around finding new solutions and new innovators. Challenge prizes can be really effective at seeking out the people and the ideas that wouldn't normally um, uh, arise through regular, um, say, grant funding processes or procurement processes, partly because of the language attracts a different kind of um, audience, um, and also partly because of this point going back to the point that you don't need to have a track record. So this allows the funder to actually be quite open and this is kind of why it's important to kind of set fairly specific challenge as well because that 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 helps um, give people a hook and and it helps attract people um, people can um, relate to a, a specific problem and you might find people who are quite passionate about that but not necessarily working in that field with a track record in that field um, kudos is another really important thing um, and that is what um, the, the the kudos that getting to a particular point in a challenge prize process or winning a prize gives the innovator is really important. All these things over on, on your right-hand side around recognition, built confidence, ability to leverage other support or other funding is all around this kind of the profile um, and, and the recognition that people get. Um, however... Um, it's easy to get excited about all these benefits and think kind of challenge prizes are going to solve everything for me. But two really important points to make. One is that the prize design has to be right. It has to be right for the goal that you're setting and it has to be right for the context that you're working in. So, for example, if, if, you, don't, if you don't ask for um, specific um, evidenced impact in your prize and you don't structure it in that way, you're not going to get that. Um, and... Challenge prizes can be a good way to manage risk, actually, for both the prize, mainly for the prize sponsor, but also for the innovator. Um, they can be a very risky business because you put in a lot of effort up front and you don't necessarily win anything at the end. But you can, and I'll talk about this in what we did with the Big Green Challenge, you can, um, you can design a prize that creates, for example, stages, gives people some support or smaller prizes along the way, which can help mitigate that risk for uh, the innovators. So your, your benefits will be quite closely tied to the way that you design the prize. And also, you know, challenge prizes won't always be the best tool to use in every situation. So these are some examples of challenge prizes. Um, Nigel mentioned the Big Green Challenge that we ran at Nessa from 2007 to 9. And this was, um, we took inspiration from um, something called the X Prize um, in America. This is the most successful X Prize was around advancing commercial space flight and kind of kick-starting the commercial space flight industry. And we wanted to see how that would translate to working on an issue um, that affects, is more closely affecting lots of people and um, working with community organisations. So how could you bring a wider set of people, enable a wider set of people to engage with something like a challenge prize? Which is why we created a staged approach. So we created a kind of funnel, very, very open first stage, not asking a lot of applicants at all. We had 355 applicants. We then took 100 of the most promising, gave them some support so that our, our kind of goal was if they left the competition at that stage, they'd leave in a better state than when they entered so we gave them support to work up idea into a detailed plan we chose 10 finalists and those 10 finalists put their idea into practice with a small amount of funding um, up to 20,000 pounds and um, and some uh, sort of social business support um, over the course of a year and those 10 finalists reduced CO2 emissions in their community. So that was the goal. How much can you reduce CO2 emissions in your community in a year? They reduced emissions by between 10 and 46%. Now, the average at that time was minus was 4% reductions in the UK. So they, between 2.5 and 11 times, 11.5 11 times more than the national average was the impact that they achieved, which was quite phenomenal, really. Um, 
Other examples um, relevant to the public sector, so the NHS Challenge Prizes run a number of different types of challenges, including their £1 million breakthrough challenges. So I'm going to read this, excuse me. So an example of that in um, the area of um, diabetes is they've set a challenge to demonstrate a clinically safe treatment to maintain or enhance functioning beta cell mass long term in people with type 1 or type 2 diabetes. It's quite a specific, really, really important challenge. Um, they run a number of other challenges like that. The um, two, two um, examples from outside of the UK, the Wendy Schmidt Oil Cleanup, for, which was another prize from the XPRIZE Foundation, um, two teams um, managed to either meet or exceed the goal of, I won't give you the technical details, but basically they uh, improved the previously recorded rate for oil cleanup on the sea surface by three times through that prize. And that's an example of a prize that responded to a very immediate short-term challenge, but one that could easily reoccur. So there was a kind of longer-term impact as well. This is, again, it's a totally up to the prize design. So there are some principles that you might want to hold on to, like, for example, setting a, a, a clear, specific goal and um, perhaps giving the money based on results as opposed to ideas, although there are some challenge prizes that do give the prize based on ideas. Um, so you might want to set some parameters, but within that, it's really important to think about what's relevant for what you're doing and, and maybe to keep some flexibility. So quite a few prizes that are set say that they, and this is what we did with Big Green Challenge as well, they, they want to tie the prize to what's achieved. So they want to give a little bit of flexibility that if two teams do meet that goal that they both they can be both recognized with big green challenge we had a one million pound prize pot and we ended up giving three prizes of three hundred thousand pounds and a runner-up prize of a hundred thousand it's very tricky because um sorry i try not to get on too much uh, it's very tricky because um people's expect people want to know is there going to be a first prize second prize how many people are going to win so you have to kind of balance that with trying to be true to giving the prize based on like in proportion to the results that are achieved. So it's, it is, that's, a, that's kind of a tricky area. Um, the Nordic built example, I won't tell you about um, in detail now because I think I'm running out of time, but they, um, basically they've taken a traditional architecture prize and they've adapted and changed that so it's more open and so that there are kind of, it's more results based as well. Um, there are also, I think it's important to say that there are a number of organizations and online platforms um, being developed at the moment that are available to you to work with in partnership and, and, and to kind of run prizes or run challenge prizes and similar approaches on. Um, that includes the Centre for Challenge Prizes, which we just set up at, at Nesta. Um, the intention to set this up was announced in the Department for Business Innovation and Skills Innovation and Research Strategy this time last year. So it's a fairly new thing. We launched it in April with um, David Willits and with um, colleagues from NASA who have sent up a simpler, similar um, organi um, organization center in, in the States. And our mission is essentially to grow the field of challenge prizes, to grow the use of them, um, and also to kind of run challenge prizes ourselves and to try and find and test and reward the innovations that are going to demonstrate the biggest impact on the issues that affect our lives. Um, and since late April, we've launched um, five prizes. We're working with um, beers on reducing a uh, prize around reducing bike theft and also getting ready to launch one with them on car use, better use of carbon data. Uh, with the Cabinet Office, we're working on waste reduction and reducing isolation among older people, which is part of their giving strategy. We're also advising and supporting the European Commission on one on creating new forms of work and the um, United Nations Development Programme and one around clean energy. Um, we're going to launch more prizes um, over the next year, and some will also close. We've started to build a network of practitioners in the UK and internationally, and over the next year, we hope to develop that further. So if some of you are starting to develop challenge prizes, really like to hear from you and work out how you might be part of that network. And we're planning some research work. We're doing blogging, speaking at events like this, and, and tweeting. So um, do kind of follow us and contact us and let us know what you're doing.